In this quick tip, I'm going to uh, demonstrate what I think is the very quickest way possible to create holes in a sub-D surface. So, the first example is going to be the easy example. We've got a plane, it's completely flat, and it's subdivided. So, I'm going to hit N to create a new mesh item, and I'm going to hit 1 on the numeric keypad to switch to the top view. And I'm going to grab the cylinder tool, and just drag out a cylinder. Now I've got the advanced tool handles on, so if I grab these corners and hold control, I can make a perfect circle. Now what I'm going to do is drag out, and I don't want to get too close to the vertices of the underlying mesh, so I'm going to go sort of somewhere in the middle of this bit here. And now I'm going to hit the full stop on the numeric keypad to switch to the perspective view, and I'm going to give my cylinder some height and just put it in the middle of the plane. Now it doesn't matter how many sides the cylinder has. Give it quite a few sides. I've given it 50 just so it's nice and round. And now I'm going to drop the tool and I'm going to switch back to my plane. And in the top view, I am going to go into polygon mode and I'm just going to paint select all these polys in the middle and um, basically delete them. Now in edge mode, I'm going to double click, select these edges, and I'm going to go back to my perspective view. Then I'm going to hit F11 to bring up the snapping and constraints, and I'm going to put background constraint on and make sure that it's in vector mode. And now all I need to do is grab the scale tool and um, scale in. And as you can see, what we've got is um, our geometry perfectly constrained to the cylinder that we dragged out. If this is going to be a flat surface, you can actually probably get away with, with leaving it like this. If I switch to reflection mode, you can see it's, uh, it's absolutely fine. Let me just turn the grid off. It's absolutely fine, but if you wanted to clean it up a little bit, um, switch back to GL. What you could do is go to polygon mode and just paint select these polygons. Hit Alt C to activate a loop slice, and you can just put a loop in here um, at 50%. Now, there are some triangles and some... Um, Ngons created with this procedure. If you look in your uh, stats, you can see that they're, they're highlighted there, and I'll show you where they are. They're here and here. They're very simple to get rid of. If you go to edge mode, just select these two edges here, and in uh, the edge tab, go join averaged, and just uh, do that for these four sets of edges. Like this, join averaged, join averaged. And now if you look in your uh, info and stats, you can see we're back to all quads. So if I switch to reflection mode, we've got a really nice surface. And if I go shift tab to go into, um, into Catmull Clark, you can see we've got a perfect circle on a perfect flat plane. So this is the easy example. Now what if you're dealing with a curved plane and it's off center? Well, that's what we're going to look at next. So to spice things up, I've got a curved surface which is offset and at a weird angle and um, we're going to punch a hole in this. So the first thing to do is just to select four polygons in well where we want the hole to be and then hit shift home to align our work plane to um, these polys and now if I go to the top view, the top view um, is in relation to the new work plane position so we're directly above those polygons now and I'm going to hit N to do a new mesh item and um, initialize the cylinder tool and I'm going to drag out a cylinder and then hold control to make a circle by dragging on the corners of the advanced tool handles and just as before just going to make sure it's sort of halfway between these uh, polys here and I'm going to zero everything make sure that uh, it's nicely centered and now I'll go back to my perspective view and I am going to drag out some thickness to this polygon and bring it down a little bit. And now I can drop the cylinder and go back to my top view. So the procedure is uh, similar to before, but uh, before we carry on, we need to make a duplicate of the mesh, uh, of the actual curved surface. So um, if this was a really complicated me mesh, you probably wouldn't want to make a duplicate, but just a uh, copy and paste uh, all these polys into a new mesh layer but for now we can just make a duplicate and we'll turn it off for the time being and go back into component mode and now just as before we can just grab all the polygons where our hole is supposed to be and delete them. Now um, go into edge mode and um, select these edges and if I now press F11 
put my background constraint on, make sure it's in vector, and just as before, initialize the scale tool and just drag to make a circle. So, this is all well and fine, but let's have a look in perspective view. You can see that we don't have a circle that conforms to the curve. It's all messed up, but this is really simple to fix. So, if we hide the cylinder, and uh, show the duplicate copy of our curve. Remember we've still got background constraint on. All we need to do is initialize the move tool and just drag up. And now you can see that the hole does indeed conform to the shape of the curve. So um, let me go into polygon mode and uh, shift tab to go into SDS and let's turn the reflection mode on and I'm just going to temporarily hide the work plane. You can see that although the hole is the right kind of shape we've got a bit of pinching. Um, that's not surprising because of uh, the sort of geometry that we've got. So let's see what we can do to fix it. So let's uh, go back into, into our top view and um, the first thing we do is uh, go into polygon mode and Let's paint select all of these polys here and hit Alt C to create a new loop. Make sure that you've got slice selected on. I forgot to mention that last time, so because you only want the uh, the slice to be here. And just as before, we're left with um, clicking our stats. It's given us uh, some triangles and some n-gons. So let's just drop the tool, and you can see just as before the triangles and n-gons are here. But we know how to get rid of those. We just go into edge mode, select those edges, go to edge, join averaged, bang. Let's do that here. Join averaged, bang. Join averaged, and finally, join averaged. So now we've got much cleaner geometry. So let's go back into perspective mode, and uh, we can see in our stats that there's no triangles, there's no n-gons, and if I go into reflection mode, we should have a really clean mesh. It's pretty good, I think. So that is how to punch a hole in a curved surface. I think this is pretty much the quickest method that uh, I've ever found. So um, thanks for watching. I hope you found it helpful.